Good morning, everyone. We're so happy to be able to join you online this morning at Galilee South Community Church. We're so excited for, for what God wants to do this morning. God, we know that um, a lot of you are, are likely watching this on your screens um, at home. So we'd love um, for you to still uh, worship along with us and spend time in God's presence this morning. Just gonna pray real quick um, and, then, and then we'll get started. Jesus, we thank you so much for everything that you've done. But God, we also know that you're working right now in the midst of, of all of the chaos and all of the, 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 just all of the problems that we have. God, we know that you're still working. God, we worship you this morning. We worship you for who you are. God, we thank you for what you're going to do because we know it's going to be glorious. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yeah. 
when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging sing these words and as we receive from your word today that you would bring that unexplainable peace to us in Jesus name I pray amen now's our time for offering and as you can see um we won't be passing any bags, but you are able to bring your offering to the church directly. You're also welcome to give online as well. So let's pray for the offering. Jesus, thank you for your generosity towards us. God, you're more than generous to us. God, even in the midst of a crumbling economy or the 
the struggles of, of everyday life. God, you are so, so good to us. God, we thank you that we're able to use what we earn and just give a little bit back to you because it was yours in the first place. God, we just ask that you'd bless this offering, that you'd multiply it, that you'd use it for your kingdom. God, we thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is, a true, this is truly an extraordinary time, and we're so grateful that through online that we're able to still gather. Um, I pray that that was a fruitful time of worship uh, as we sing praises to God. And this morning, we want to join together to pray. Right now, I feel the number one duty, number one responsibility of, cho- of the children of God is to pray. There's no more important time than now to pray. So we're going to join together and and lift up prayers to our God who's eager to hear us. He he says in his word that he turns toward us as he listens to his people, praises him, and to pray to him. So this morning we want to pray together for uh, what what has taken place, um, what has taken place not just in our nation, but in, around the world. Uh, this, this COVID-19 virus and, and just the amount of damage, the amount of death, amount of suffering that it has caused. That let's, let us pray together. Uh, let's, let's, let's pray together as, as the people of God and shout out to him and pray for his healing and pray for his salvation and pray uh, that God would come and so that, so that this plague would cease, so this disease would depart from his people and from uh, the land that he, which he created it. Let's pray together. Lord, we come before you right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that, that this suffering shall pass. Lord, uh, you, you said that the weapon that form against us shall not, shall not prosper. Oh, Lord, this, this disease, this attack that upon uh, not just your people, but your creation. God, I pray, Lord, that by your grace, Lord, you will cease. That, that, the, that the, those who are suffering right now, Lord, those who are sick right now, God, in Jesus' name, in their hospital rooms, in, on their hospital beds, God, that they will be touched by the mighty power of Jesus, that they will be touched by your healing hand. God, we pray that for those uh, who are struggling uh, because they're suffering from loss of family members, that they're suffering from a loss of their jobs uh, and, and the opportunity to feed their family. God, we just lift those things up to you right now, Lord Jesus, for you are a merciful and compassionate God. Lord, that you said Jesus, when he saw the those who are suffering, oh, he was compassionate toward them and he healed them. God, we pray that there will be healing, that there will be a miraculous recovery. Lord, that will be peace beyond understanding. Lord, that will fill this land right now. Lord, fill the nations. God, we pray for all the leaders uh, as they're making decisions. God, that they will know that there are many in the front line that, that needs to supply, that there are many in the front lines that's willing to give their lives uh, for the sick. So God, we just pray that uh, there will be wisdom and there will be provision for those who are in the front line right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray that you hear our prayer. So, Lord, that this plague will cease. Lord, that, that uh, we can once again celebrate the goodness of God in the midst of suffering. And also, uh, we will celebrate when this, uh, when this shall pass. Thank you, Lord. We just lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pray, I pray that you join us uh, in, in that prayer um, because we trust that God is doing, God is working something that's beyond our imagination. So God is doing something for his perfect well. We give thanks to our Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, this morning, we also have a few announcements that we want to share with you. Um, I know that we're not able to uh, meet in person, but uh, there are very many, uh, there are quite a few exciting opportunities that we can do online. Uh, actually, the first one is not online. Uh, first one is actually, we call it the Act Out of Love um, campaign. 
And what we're going to do in the Act Up Out of Love campaign is, first of all, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, have you contribute towards uh, the GSCC COVID-19 Love Fund. So we've kind of uh, remodeled our love fund uh, in a way that as you're giving towards this love fund, we're going to use that funding toward uh, whatever area uh, that's needed right now, uh, specific to those uh, that, ha that have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. Uh, so, um, so please uh, be, uh, uh, be contributing to that. Uh, we'll be hopefully giving you more details as we are um, we're finding out different ways that you can contribute toward that. Uh, the second thing is, is uh, we've, we're, we're, we will also provide on our website uh, a couple of links that you can find out how you could get involved. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, one of the important things is that we're, we've been empowered by the Spirit of God to go out and to love on people, to serve on people. He's given us the power to do that. Uh, so whether it's to, to donate uh, uh, PPEs, uh, personal protective equipment, or to uh, participate in any of the state-mandated volunteer programs, uh, we're going to provide the links so you'll have an opportunity to, to do that. Um, so that's our first announcement. Uh, second, uh, second thing, I know that many of you are, are, are just hungry for the Word of God right now. I know many of you want to know the Word of God and want to actually share and do life with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's difficult when we are um, uh, not meeting uh, regularly at church, but this is something that we could do online. So one of the things that we wanted to roll out is that we wanted to roll out a Bible reading and praying plan, and this is going to be in a group of three people, okay? Three is a good number. Three is the trinity, right? So we, we, we believe that uh, there's an opportunity for you and maybe two others, uh, and, and we encourage brothers with brothers and sisters with sisters, but if you guys want to do couples to couples, uh, that works as well. But it's just a, a really, uh, really easy way for us to stay connected but also be uh, gaining strength by reading the Word of God. So we're going to send out uh, a, a document. Uh, we, we want to thank our uh, coworkers for producing this document in both English uh, in English, and uh, you can find a couple others where you could maybe spend about 15 to, to 20 minutes a day uh, where you're going to read some scripture together, you're going to pray together, and just share a little bit of what you have gained from the Word of God. Uh, and I believe that's going to be a tremendous way for us to stay uh, connected and also stay uh, engaged with the Word of God. So that's our second announcement. Uh, the third thing we wanted to uh, remind you is that our children ministry uh, has pre prepared a, a material, and, uh, and this is for uh, your kids. Uh, so after the, the online service, uh, you could go to our website uh, and actually download this material. Um, well, maybe, maybe it might be a good idea to download it and prepare it, and then next week you could do that. But we want to let you know that that material is available. You can use it any time to do a Sunday school lesson with your, with your kids, and I think that's going to be a fantastic opportunity for you guys to grow as a family. Um, and that's actually all the announcement that we have uh, for this morning. I wanted to thank the worship team again uh, for coming in and to, uh, uh, to lead us in, in worship. Uh, next, uh, we want to we want to jump into the Word of God because I know that He has something for us this morning. Uh, he has something to to speak uh, to each one of our lives. So before I do that, um, uh, I wanted to uh, lead us in the Word of Prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this glorious morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, that we can worship you uh, in the comfort of our own home. Uh, Lord, we just pray that in, in this uh, coming time, Lord, that, that you would just use it for your kingdom purpose. God, that, that you, would, you would redeem this time uh, so that it could be used uh, for, uh, for your kingdom, to grow your kingdom, to grow us, uh, and to really bring confidence uh, and to bring security and comfort into our life uh, in the midst of this uncertainty. So, Lord, we want to give you thanks. I pray that you speak uh, through me this morning, uh, through, speak through your word this morning, so that we may uh, grow up to be more mature and that we could grow stronger even in the midst of disaster. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I really can't believe it that this is the third straight week that we're actually doing a, a service online. And I just never thought that this would be something that we would ever really get involved to doing. And to be honest with you, I, I re I'm, really, I'm really missing uh, each one of you. I know there are some of you that I, that I saw online this, this past week uh, on, uh, in our small group uh, online meeting, but I just miss you know, uh, giving you a pat on the back or to be able to lay hand to pray for you. Um, so for now, the only thing that I can share with you 
uh, is something cool that actually Carol and I started to doing uh, this, this week, uh, which is to, uh, to post a food picture along with some Bible scripture, okay? So if you're a foodie like myself, this is still a time where we, uh, this is still a time where we can enjoy um, delicious food that we've made. Uh, man, there, there's, some, there's some stuff. I, I know it's getting close to lunch, but I want you to make it through the, the, the sermon, and then you can go make something good for yourself. Uh, you know, these are some delicious food. And what we've been doing, it's this little food challenge, uh, but not just posting your food picture, all right, because we don't just live for food, but we also live for the Word of God, right? So what we want to challenge you, if anyone uh, tag you, then to go ahead and post your lunch picture or your dinner picture, uh, and along with the scripture of the day, a scripture that you read that day that you feel like God is uh, speaking to you, okay? So I really uh, hope you enjoy it. Just try not to drool too much when you're reading these food pictures or you're watching, uh, looking at these food pictures. Uh, I know that I, I've, I've certainly uh, made some suggestions for Carol when I look at these, like, oh, I want to eat some baozi, you know? It's so great. Um, this morning, I wanted to uh, share with you uh, from a scripture that... Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Let your faithful ones see decay. Verse 11, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. Like I mentioned, this is probably a psalm that you're, you're pretty familiar with. I don't know if you've guessed it along the way uh, when I was reading, but this is uh, Psalm 16, okay? Now, this is known as a miktam, uh, or uh, in English, it's a golden psalm, okay? What is a golden psalm? Well, one of the ways that you could understand a golden psalm is that it's an all-time classic, okay? It is one that has brought many people comfort. It's the one that, that many have gained confidence. Many have felt blessed when they read this uh, Psalm of David. And if you understand a, a little bit of the context of what's happening in this Psalm, you might figure out that David is not uh, in the best of situation. Matter of fact, he might actually be in great trouble. Why? Because the first thing he says, he says, keep me safe, my God, for I take refuge. You know, if you're not in trouble, you don't need to take refuge. If you're doing great, you're just walking down the street and enjoying life and praising God for the weather, praising God for the, uh, for the mountains, praising God for the cloud in the sky. But no, when you're in trouble, you're about to take refuge, right? So that's how David started this psalm. He says, Lord, I want to take refuge in you. And later on, it also gives us another indication. He says that you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. So we're talking, so David is talking about a life and death situation, all right? There's nothing, nothing good uh, to, to actually, you know, be happy about here because his life uh, is threatened. So many, many believe that, that David wrote this psalm, wrote Psalm 16, when he was being pursued by Saul, okay? He was hiding in the caves. And, and, and brothers and sisters, this is actually very relevant to us right now. You know, when I talk to a lot of people, uh, the sense that I get is that, that we, you know, we talk about shelter in place, we talk about stay at home. Kind of the main thing that really we're doing is we're kind of hiding. 
Okay, we're kind of hiding. We're hiding from the, the people who have been infected by the virus, right? So that we don't get infected ourselves. So we are similar to David in the sense that we're kind of hiding. Uh, we're just, instead of hiding in the cave, we're hiding in our own home. And, and our hope is that we can, we can be kept away from the virus and what's going on right now. But something that we can, lo- we can learn from David's psalm this morning is how confident he is in the Lord. You know, David found his confidence uh, in two ways. He found his confidence in the Lord uh, through his own eyesight. He, he, he saw things. And then he also found confidence in the Lord through his faith, uh, through his spiritual eyes. So he was able to see what God is doing, and there's a reason why the verse says that he will not be shaken, even when his life is actually on the line. So I've titled the message this morning, See the Lord and You Will Not Be Shaken. See the Lord and You Will Not Be Shaken. And this morning, I'm hoping to share with you four things uh, in four directions that David was looking that he saw God working and therefore he was not shaken. So the first, the first thing I wanted to share is to look up, is to look up. So if, if you are uh, with somebody, tell the person next to you, hey, you got to look up. You got to look up. Let's look at verse 1, what it says. It says, keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. And verse 2, it says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. You know, um, this, this is, again, David is making a very clear decision here. He's making a very clear decision, even in the midst of his life being pursued. And what is the decision that he made? He made his decision when he said that he will seek God to protect him. So the the cave is there. Yeah, he's hiding. But the one that's really covering him right now, the one that's really protecting him right now, is not the cave. It's actually God himself. Because in David's heart and in his mind of the Israelites, they'd all know clearly that one of the name of Yahweh is protector. Yahweh is protector. God protects his people. If you don't believe me, you can listen to this psalm. This is another psalm, not written by David, but it's written by the Israelites uh, when they sing as they're going to, uh, this is a psalm of, of ascent. Uh, this is when they go up to the, the temple, uh, uh, when, they, when they have to go up to the temple each year to give sacrifices. This is a psalm that they sing as they're traveling through the woods uh, in danger. This, this is uh, Psalm 121, you're very familiar with. It says, I lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? Well, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and the earth. Guess what, where they're looking, what direction they're looking? They're looking up, right? Because uh, uh, Jerusalem is on a hill, so they're ascending, they're looking up, they're looking up at God, right? So he says, he will not allow my foot to be moved, he who keeps you, will not slumber. Let's keep count. This is the first. He who keeps you, he protects you. Verse 4, it says, Behold, he who keep Israel, again, God is our keeper, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Well, praise God. Because there's times when Carol has asked me to watch something, and I've fallen asleep. But here, our God does not slumber. Our God does not sleep because he is our keeper. It says, verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. No longer, uh, no matter if it's in the morning or if it's night, God is keeping you. God is keeping you at every moment. The Lord shall preserve you, another one. Uh, what is that? One, two, three, four. That's the fourth time he mentioned either kept or preserved. He preserves you from evil. He shall preserve your soul. The, lo- the Lord shall preserve you going out and coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. This is a concept that David knows clearly, the Israelites knows clearly, that the Lord is our protector. The Lord protects us. So when we're looking up to him, we're looking at his protection. Praise God. Praise God. You know, you know, here David confirms. He says, he said, I will find refuge in the Lord. He knows that he can fully hide under God because God's got it, because God is in control. 
Look at what David writes next in verse 2. He says, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. You know, you know, you know this, this again, this is a verse that we, we pray all the time, okay? Apart from you, God, that I have no good thing. But if you understand the relationship that David is describing here, this is the key to understanding why David has such confidence, all right? The first thing that David says here is that you are my Lord. You know, we living in the Western culture, we don't really understand Lord very much. We, we feel like I'm my own boss, all right? And I get to decide what I want to do. But here, uh, in their context, they understand Lord very clear. Lord is what? Lord is master, okay? Lord means that I'm master. I'm the master of your life, which means everything in your life. Guess what? I'm in control of. You're, as, as a master and slave um, relationship, there's not much for you to control. You basically are under the protection of your Lord, and you do what your Lord tells you. So when David makes that claim, he says, you're my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. What David is saying is this. David is he's going to be a future king, but here he's no king. Here he's the slave. He's saying, God, you are my king. You are my Lord, and if I'm away from you, I have no good thing. I have nothing. I have nothing. And this is someone who has, uh, this is someone who is, is the, the second uh, king of Israel. He's saying, apart from you, God, I have no good thing at all. You know, you know a lot of times in our, in our own lives, I, we have to question, what is my relationship with God like? Is God kind of that, that extra option? You know, if, you know, when I go in and buy a car, all right, and, and this car is, you know, $20,000, but I have $25,000 uh, in my pocket, in my, in my budget, so I can, I, I can spend another $5,000 for, for, for some of those upsell option, right? Is God an upsell option for you? Is God a, an insurance that you buy that when, when something goes terribly wrong, for example, coronavirus, if something goes really, really wrong in my life, like I'm about to lose my job, all of a sudden, God becomes in the forefront, but before that, he's kind of just that option. He's optional. But, but in a slave and master relationship, your master cannot be optional. So for David, God is not optional. Therefore, he finds refuge in God. And he says that, that I have no good thing apart from you, Lord. So we must understand the reason why David is so confident is that he's in that relationship with God where God is absolutely first in his life. He is the master of his life. And a master's job is to make sure that those that fall under him are taken care of. And that's why for David, he knows clearly that he's being taken care of. So as he's looking up, as he's looking higher and higher, you know, I, I heard this illustration and I love it. You know, when David was facing Goliath, guess what he had to do? He had to look up, right? Because Goliath is super tall, and David is this uh, a short shepherd boy. He's looking up, right? But you know, you know, here, David is not actually looking at Goliath. You know who David is looking at? He's looking at the God of the universe. He's looking at his creator. As he's looking up, he's looking beyond Goliath. He's seeing the God who sits in heaven in control of all things at that moment. And, and this one who, who is defaming God is, is, no, uh, is, 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 is uh, no competition for him because the maker of the universe is the one that he's looking at. You know, I, I love that so much because, because that's what we need to do right now. As God's people, instead of, look, uh, instead of um, you know, just confused, not knowing what to think, we need to look up. We need to look up and know that God is in control, that I have nothing, that I have no good thing apart from God, and I can find refuge in him. The second direction we need to look. The second direction we need to look is to look around. All right? We need to look around. You know, let's look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, I said of the holy people who are in the land, they are noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their name on my lip. You know, David is talking about uh, two types of people in these two verses. And these two people are very different. The first type of people, uh, he calls them the noble ones, okay? They're the noble ones. These are the people who are lovers of God. These are people who really love God. 
and they're God's chosen people. Okay, and they have uh, they have honor the fact that they're chosen, and they live in a in a, in a way that's according uh, to God's uh, choosing of them. And here he says very very clearly uh, uh, that that he sees them, and that he sees them as noble ones. Okay, he he sees them as as as, as really good. You know, uh, I I gotta tell you, you know, one of the easiest way one of the easiest way that that we could tell. Um, if somebody is, is serious about something, one of the easiest ways that we can tell the condition of their heart is when there's trouble. When trouble comes, we can really see the condition of people's heart. In the time of trial, uh, what, how would a Christian respond is, is, is a way for us to see what their heart's condition is. You know, many of us are, 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 doing, uh, are praying this way. Many of us are praying that God will protect us from the virus. And brothers and sisters, I pray the same prayer. I pray that God will protect me, my family. God will protect our church family. God will pr protect our, uh, our community from the virus. But I want to tell you something, that there are some lovers of God who is not afraid of being contracted by the virus and who has made incredible sacrifice for God's name. You know, I, I read a, a report this week, um, and this is, this is a report out of northern Italy, okay? As, as you know, that's probably one of the, uh, the, the worst uh, spread of coronavirus, the most lethal uh, place in the world right now. And, and this, this, um, this, this took place in the province of Bergamo, where there were 7,000 people infected. Okay. Now you know you know compare New York New York City you know you know seven thousand small but this is northern Italy in a small town we're talking probably you know half the town is in infected, all right and out of that seven thousand people there were twenty priests, twenty priests that has already died of COVID nineteen. And the, and and why and they were asking why did these priests die, you know uh, did, did they did they just just happen to to keep running. Uh, you know, masses, and then, and then, uh, and then, you know, they, they, they're infecting each other? No. They, they, they've actually, they've actually done the same as here, that they've stopped gathering together um, uh, for services or for masses uh, three weeks ago. But why are these priests dying? Well, what, 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 what this um, article shared was that these priests are actually going to, um, to bless those on their deadbed. They're going there, um, they're, they're going there to give them their final right, to give them their last right. And, and they, they asked one of the priests as, as he, was, he was on his own deathbed. He said, he said, why did you go? Why did you go? And the priest said, you know, I just, I just felt that I didn't want the person to die alone. I didn't want the person to die alone. So they were willing as a result to go and to minister to these people and it actually gets infected and actually uh, gave up their life as a result. You know, they interview, they interview the, the bishop that's in control of that, that zone, and they, and, they, and they said, you know, um, th don't, don't these priests know that this is dangerous? That if they go, they could die. Well, this is what they said. They said these priests tell them that they're not calculating the risk because they have counted the cost b before they follow Christ. They have counted the cost before they follow Christ. So, so when David is, is, is looking around, he sees these noble ones, kind of like us today, that we look around, we see a lot of bad news, but brothers and sisters, I want you to focus on the noble ones. I want you to focus on there are God's people that are doing incredible things in the midst of disaster. There are God's people who are loving others, willing to give their life just so that God can be honored, just so that his name May be, may be lived it high. You know, David also mentioned a second type of people here. And this is what he says. He says that these people, that their trouble, uh, these are the people who run after other gods. And they will suffer more and more. And he says he's not going to be like them. He would not pour out, he would not pour out libation of blood to such God or to take up their name like, like them on their lips. You know, you know, you know, these there are people who live in a way that 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 what God says, what God is doing is irrelevant to them. That it's secondary to them. 
And, and, and really for us, as, as we look at our own lives, as we look at the society that we live in, there are lots of people who have not placed God first in their lives. And, and what, what they're doing right now is, as the scripture says, is that, is that even though they're giving gifts, they're giving worship to these other gods, but they, but they actually increase, increase in their troubles. All right, they feel the, the, the pressure. Uh, they feel they, they don't feel peace. They feel like I need to accumulate more just so for the rainy day. You know, you know here, here's a very interesting thing. I, I heard this on the radio as well that it talks about um, uh, the, uh, the, this, this was a show that, that talks about investment advices. All right. I know a lot of people are probably listening to investment advices uh, these days because you're looking at a 401k and it's really nervous, right? And so, so here, this financial planner was asked by his client to sell all of his stock and to sell all of his mutual fund, okay? And then, and then this financial planner tells him, he says, you know, you know, you know uh, Mr. Client, let me ask you, are you, are you planning on uh, investing uh, this money for the next 30 years, you know, when you retire, or do you kind of need the cash right now? Now, do you, do you understand what, what's behind this statement? What's behind the statement, even in a worldly financial planner, is saying, dude, you don't need to freak out right now, all right? You don't need to worry. You don't need this money until 30 years from now when you're retiring. So why are you staring at it? Why are you so freaked out by it, right? God is saying the same thing to us. Jesus says the same thing to us. He says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow what? will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So brothers and sisters, you, you need to look around. There are people around you that's doing amazing things that in this moment, God's using people to do amazing things this moment, and there are also people who are just completely lost it. And they feel like this is, this is doomsday, all right? That there's no hope, and they, they need to get as much cash, they need to go buy a gun, and they need to do all these things just to secure their life. But what Jesus is telling us here, what, what David is telling us here, is that I won't do these things, all right? I'm not going to put my trust in these other gods, in these small G gods. I'm going to place my trust in the living God, in the God who is my refuge. You know, as I look around our own church, you know, I, I see some amazing things. You know, I want, I want to share with you that, that even in the midst of, of these troubled times, that I've noticed that we have more people than ever praying. We have more people joining prayer meetings. We have more people joining morning prayers. Uh, we have, we, we're, we're, we're on our way, hopefully, to reaching 3,000 prayers, praying for revival of our church. Praise God. That is what we should be looking at instead of looking at the world that, that has completely lost it. You know, I, I, want, I, want to, I wanted to uh, um, give some props to our small group leaders. You know, you know they, they, they're out there trying new things. They're setting up Zoom meetings. You know, we, we see, you know, we have our young people. Uh, you know, uh, this, this is amazing. Before COVID-19 happened, we averaged about five people in our youth group. Last, last Friday, we, we had 17 youth uh, joined uh, our, uh, uh, our Discord uh, broadcast. They were, they were on there sharing lives together. They're sharing God's word together. Uh, and and I'll, I'll tell you something amazing. We actually, uh, I, and I feel like I'm praising the, the same guys every week, but we, we, had, we have um, uh, these two brothers who are, who are running our youth group right now, and they got 11 kids to engage to do devotions together on a daily basis. Hallelujah. That has never happened in our church before. 11 kids saying, hey, I would like to read uh, God's word with you together every single day. Now, I pray that they follow through, but what a fantastic start. So I want to tell you, the reason why we're not shaken in days like these is because we can look around. We can look around and see that there are people, there are noble ones that God is using right now. And that helps us not to be shaken in, a day, in days like these. We need to look up, and then we need to look around. And the third, things, the third direction we want to look is to look within. Is to look within. Verse 5, it says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. 
I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him and my right hand, I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. You know, you know there was a, a small real estate broker hey, who, who, has, who, who is completely dismayed because a brand new um, uh, real estate franchise has decided to open up right next door to his store. And they have a huge sign. And the huge sign says, best agents. And he was horrified because a week later, on his other side, opens up another real estate store. All right? And this real estate store also puts up a huge sign. And on the sign, it says, lowest commission. So on one side, he has the best agents. On the other side, he has the lowest commission. So this, this, real, this small real estate uh, Asian office is completely freaked out. It's like, what am I going to do? These guys have huge advertising. I'm going to lose all my business. People are going to go to them. Well, suddenly he had an idea. He decided to get a, 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 the biggest sign of both of them and put it up. And you know what it says on there? It says main entrance. I think that's, that is super clever. Super clever. You know, uh, this is a, a real estate joke. Uh, I told it because when I read this verse, all right, when I read verse 5, um, when I read verse 5 and verse 6, it reminds me of every time somebody buys a new home, all right? When, when somebody buys a new home or they have a new property, they've secured a lot, and they ask the pastor to go, hey, pastor, please come and pray for my new home. I love it. I think it's great. I, I go and, oh, I sound like Donald Trump just now. Um, I, I go and, and, I, and I pray uh, for our brothers and sisters who have a new house. But, you know, this is, this is interesting. We, if you think about the context of when, when uh, David was writing this psalm, he's not thinking at all about buying a house, right? He's hiding in a cave. He's, he's about to lose his life. He's not thinking about buying a house. He's not thinking about the Lord has a plot of land. Okay, that, that it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall on, on, a, on a nice countryside. It's going to be delightful. That's not on his thought right now. So why, so why is he talking about this in a psalm where he, he's afraid for his own life? Okay, actually, he's basically repeating what he's saying in verse 2, which he says, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. So David, he's making a statement that he may not have a lot of things secure right now, all right? There's lack of security, uncertainty about his future right now, okay? But deep down in his heart, deep, deep down in his heart, he's actually completely satisfied. He has uncertainty. He has no property. He might not even live tomorrow, yet in his heart, he's completely satisfied. How is that possible? Well, read verse 5. It says what? It says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You alone are my portion and my cup. What, what David is saying is this, that, that even a secure lot, even a nice plot of land, a nice kingdom, a nice house, all right, and a destination, uh, uh, de destination uh, plot of land, does not compare to the fact that, that the Lord, that the Lord alone is his portion and his cup. He's only satisfied in the Lord, but not by anything else. So brothers and sisters, we need to look within. We need to look within because when we look within, that's when we know, uh, that's where we can find true satisfaction. You know, what's, what's interesting is this. Our God is a generous God. Our God is not a stingy God. Our God is not saying, hey, you know what? Be satisfied in me and me only, and that's the only thing you'll have. I think all of us know that's not true, right? Because God actually has blessed us with a lot of things. Way more, way more than, than even back in the days, you know, of the Bible times. You know, yeah, we don't, we don't compare to Solomon and all of his wealth, but we're pretty close all right, we're living glamorously. So God actually has never shortchanged us. God has provided for us plenty, just like he here uh, makes that same promise for David as well. 
You know, you know um, the, the, the whole, um, Lord, you're my portion and my cup. The boundary line has fallen for me in the pleasant place. Surely you have found a delightful inheritance. You know, you can find the same language actually in the book of Joshua. Because in the book of Joshua, God has promised uh, in the divot land for the 12 tribes of Israel. So actually, actually David knows clearly that, that God will not, God will, he will not miss out. You know, God will not deny him from what's needed in his life. Yet, he finds his satisfaction. He finds uh, his contentment only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, especially in a season like this, in a season where we're waiting, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, in a season where we're looking at our portfolios and we're kind of getting worried, in a season where our boss might, you know, you know, you know when our boss is walking around with these slips, we're thinking, oh, no, our company is about to do layoff, right? In, in a time like this, are you still finding contentment? Are you still finding satisfaction on your job? Are you still finding satisfaction on your portfolio? Or perhaps this is a time where we need to check ourselves and say, hey, do I find satisfaction in Christ? Do I find satisfaction in God who loved me? If I know that, then my, my, then my faith will not be shaken in a time like this because I'm not dependent on those shakable things. I'm depending on the one who is absolutely unshakable, unshakable. You know, Jesus said it very clearly. You know, this is a verse that we all know very well. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto you. What are you seeking, brothers and sisters? What am I seeking in these days? Am I seeking the kingdom of God? Or am I looking at ways to cover myself, to diversify myself so I don't get in trouble? The word says, seek the kingdom of God. Seek first his kingdom, and all these things shall be given unto you. David knows clearly, so he makes this proclamation. He says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. That's David's confidence. That's why he's so confident that he's not shaken, even hiding in a cave, hiding in a cave. The fourth direction we want to look. We've looked up. We've looked around. We've looked within. The fourth direction we wanted to look is to look forward. We wanted to look forward. Let's look at verse 9 to 11. This is what it says. It says, therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Wow, how great is that? How great is that? We're, we're literally talking about uh, our heart, our soul, and, and our body. All right? You know, a lot of people have been losing sleep these days. They're waking up in the middle of the night and they're worried that they've contracted the virus. You know, they're waking up in the middle of the night because they're afraid that they're going to lose their job. They're, they're waking up in the middle of the night because they're worried about their family. And I understand those are all legit things. But here, this is what David is saying. This is David's confidence right here as he's looking forward. He's saying that, hey, you know what? My heart is glad. My tongue rejoices. I can praise. And my body also rests secure. Look at verse 10. It says, it says because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You've made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. You know, David uh, here shows us why he's not shaken, no matter how tough it gets. Because the situation for him is quite dire. The situation for him is quite dangerous. All right? The, um, he's, he's facing certain death. That's why he says that, that, that you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. If he's not going to die, he's not going to curse himself and says, God, rescue me from the realm of the dead, right? If you're perfectly uh, healthy, nobody's going to say, God, are you going to rescue me when I get really sick and die? No, not, not if you're perfectly healthy. You won't even think about these things. But David, in that situation, it's on the top of his mind. Yet he's still confident. Why? Because he knows that God will not abandon him to the realm of the dead. All right, we're talking life and death situation here. We're talking life and death situation here. You know, you know this, is, this is actually very interesting. This is very interesting. Because um, many have said that this is a prophetic word for Christ. This is, this is a Jesus prophecy in, the, in, in Psalms. 
all right, in the, in the days of David, uh, thousands of years before Jesus coming to this earth. This is a prophetic word uh, of Jesus because Peter actually in Acts chapter 2 preaches this as, as he describes the resurrection of Jesus. All right? So he talks about here. He says that, that uh, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Guess what? When Jesus died on the cross, right, he enters the realm of the dead, right? He died a physical dead. He died a physical death. But God didn't leave him there, right? Because three days later, he resurrected from the dead. And that's why the scripture says that you will not let your holy one, your faithful one, see decay. Understand? David prophetically already proclaims the fact that something as he's looking forward to the future, he sees that one day Christ will redeem all to himself. That he sees that the, this holy one of God will not see decay and will not, uh, will not uh, be abandoned in the realm of the dead. And that's the same hope that we have if we place our faith in Christ Jesus. So no matter how bad the situation gets, you know, you know, I, 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 I received, um, uh, I received a, uh, a prayer letter um, this morning, uh, or yesterday morning, actually. I, I received this prayer letter for uh, Dave and Rosanna, who were, who were, speakers, uh, who were speakers at our retreat uh, just a couple years ago. And they asked for prayer because their son, their youngest son, Stephen, uh, was, was a confirmed uh, COVID-19 patient. Actually, he, he, he was diagnosed with, with really terrible symptoms that he was, he was coughing blood and, and he, he had shortness of breath and he was taken to the hospital. You know, when I heard of that news, I, I, I have to be honest with you, man, I was a little shaken because this is somebody that I actually know, even though I don't know Stephen, but I know his parents. And these are, these are real life people who are getting very sick by this virus. So, the, so, the, so even the thought, the possibility of, oh, wow, I could potentially contract a virus and die. And you know what? That's not unreasonable. There, we, we see the number of deaths. But why, why can David be so confident in a moment where he's facing death that he today can pass on to us? It's the fact that we know that as we look forward, we know that there's a promise for those who place their trust in Christ Jesus. And that is that he would not let his holy ones see decay. That he would not abandon them in the realm of the dead. And that's for us. That's the same promise for us. Even if my life were to end here on this earth, that God's love does not leave me. If my life were to end on this earth, that there may be suffering along with it, but God is with me every step of the way. And he would not abandon me. And that there will be a hope of resurrection because I have placed my faith in Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is the one who rescues my soul. He's the one that would not forsake me. And this is why even in the midst of, of difficulties, even in the midst of chaos and struggles and fear, that I can praise and say that I can be glad uh, in my heart that I can rejoice with my tongue and my body can rest secure. Because I have an eternal hope. I have an eternal hope that's only found in Christ Jesus. That's why verse 11 says, you make known to me the path of life. Not just the life in these days, but you make known to me the path of life for eternity. Because it says, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. That's how David ends the psalm. He ends the psalm understanding that that could be the last psalm he write. Yet he still prays God. Why? He still prays God because he has filled him with joy in his presence. Just by praising God, there's joy in his presence. And just by the fact that God has made known to him a path of life, an eternal life that's only in his hand. So, so brothers and sisters, we're in a, in a time that we really don't know how everything is going to end. We don't know when it's going to end. Trust me, I'm looking forward to the, I, I believe that this virus will end, okay? I believe this plague will, will cease. 
I'm looking forward to the time that we, we can gather together to meet again um, uh, in this house of God, in his presence, to celebrate his goodness. But brothers and sisters, I'm hoping to uh, share with you and ho hoping to convince you of today is this, that we need to have a set of eyes like David, that we need to be looking up to God so that we know that we can find refuge in him, that I have no good things outside of him, that I need to be looking around, I'll be, be looking for those noble ones and joining in to what they're doing and not focus on those, those evil doers right now. We need to focus on what the noble ones are doing, and that's who we should learn after. And brothers and sisters, when, we're, when I get afraid, I need to look within. I need to find confidence within. I need to know that if the Lord is with me, then I'm not shaken. He's my provider. He's got me. And lastly, I need to look forward. And I want to say that for, for any of you, if you are watching this today, that you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, or you need to recommit your life to Jesus in times like this. Perhaps you're like those ones uh, uh, who, have, who have gone astray to worship other gods, who you have placed your trust and placed your faith in the other gods. I want to tell you, this is the time. This is the time we need to turn back to him. This is the time where I need to commit my life to Jesus. Because he, as I look forward, I see that he's the one that's going to rescue my soul. I see that he's the one that will not abandon me in the realm of the dead. And that he's the one that has eternal pleasure in his hands. So I'm going to invite the worship team to come up. And as we respond to him right now, I just want to pray that, that, that if, if God has spoken to you today, if God has gotten you, uh, gotten your attention um, through the virus, God has gotten your attention with his word this morning, I, I want to I I ask you, I want to give you an opportunity to commit your life to Jesus once again. As the worship team just uh, play some music in the background, I want, I want to lead you in a word of prayer, uh, and, and, I, and I pray that this will be an opportunity for you to turn back to God that this is, will be an opportunity for you to get back to the road uh, to tour eternity. And my prayer is that I will find you as we're walking, as we are entering into eternal shores, that I will, I will find you next to me. That at that time we can worship God. We can say, hey, you know, like David, I was looking forward. I was looking forward. Therefore, I have confidence that my life is not shaken even in the midst of trouble, in the, even in the midst of facing certain death, that I'm not shaken because Jesus Christ has came to save me. Jesus Christ has came to give his life for me. But he didn't stay, he didn't stay dead in the grave. He rose three days later. God made a way for us. Would you join me in the word of prayer? Jesus, I pray for all those that they've been touched by your spirit, that have been touched by your word today. God, I pray as we recommit our lives to you, for those of us who have uh, gone astray, for those of us who know you but have made decisions to, uh, to stray, to leave you, God, I pray that this is the day that you, you got us to this message, uh, you got us to this worship just so that we can um, re-enter into a relationship with you. And Lord, I want to pray for those uh, who have not yet, uh, even initially, for the first time, made that commitment to Jesus Christ. I pray that if that is you, that you will put your hand on your heart right now and pray. God, I pray that as, as they've indicated by putting their hands to, to their heart, that now as they confess, that you will receive them as, as your own children, that you will receive them as those that have given uh, their trust to you, to, to believe in you. And Lord, uh, for that you, they are saved. So Lord, um, so if this is your first time, you can repeat after me. Jesus, I thank you for coming to this earth, sent by your Father to come to die on the cross for my sin. God, I know that in the past, that the world has led me astray. But today, I want to return back to you. I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. And 
I want to give uh, my trust to him. I want to give my life to him. Please come and enter my heart. I thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you made that prayer today, I believe that you are saved. And I hope that you tell somebody about it because we want you to, to join this family of God and to continue to grow uh, as a disciple of Christ. Let us respond to the Lord at this time. Uh, we're going to sing uh, Waymaker because I believe that God is working right now. He's making a way for us as we look up at him, as we look around, as we look within what God is doing, and as we look forward, we trust that God is making a way. Let us sing the song together. sing together you are here you are here moving in our midst i worship you i worship you you are here working in this place i worship you i worship
of your salvation, the good news that you are our healer, the good news, God, that you redeem all things to yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us to place our trust in you. Help us to overcome those fears that we have by trusting in you. May we learn from your word today. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts now. Transform us to change us so that we may be courageous. God, that we may be strong in you. Thank you, Lord. We give you our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive the blessing from the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of the Heavenly Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now to forevermore. Amen. service. May the Lord bless you.